the Congress was held as an event in 1974, but actually the idea came before that. This is why on this slide you can see the wait, waiting, people waiting and people preparing. But actually I want to insist on the fact that this is a picture of an indigenous man with his drum. This is pronounced Waj Abal. And it means the word that walks because this drum convenes, fosters to the to the walking and also is the one that accompanies parties. So as Javier was saying, in this sense, this is a summary. Um, uh, Rogelio Cuella picture, which who is a Mexican photographer. Now the reason, the pretext, the reason of this event of uh, 1500 people meeting there without any authorities, they were representatives chosen by the communities themselves. This was held to celebrate the 500 year anniversary of the birth of Fray Bartolomé de las Casas. First, in San Cristóbal, there was a group of people, of renowned people of San Cristóbal, who, who created a committee, a Lascasian committee. Among them was the priest, Father Samuel Garcia. We had a historian, Moscoso, the Angel Robles, who was in charge of indigenous affairs from the state uh, government and also the Bishop uh, of San Cristobal. So the whole committee said that the only one who has the capability, the ability of convening indigenous peoples and having this, this Congress is Don Samuel Garcia. So they asked him to organize the Congress and he, called for the Maris brothers of the Guadalupe mission so that they could have uh, this whole preparation, this whole organizing to start with this process of the Congress. Back then, the community of Marists of the Guadalupe mission in San Cristobal was made up of Carlos Martinez Lavin, a sociologist, Tacho Cepeda, an old man who then, who then was called Commander Tacho, who, who, who then uh, gave the name to Commander Tacho, because this was a man who served indigenous people for all his life. Then we had the participation of all other people from different pastoral areas people from Chilon, Baja, Bachacón, Father Polo, who was in Chamula, Father Miguel Chanto, who was in Chenaló, the team of religious women, sisters of Divino Pastor, who also was in, were in charge of the other areas. Of, of the city and many other pastoral actors and several intellectual people such as Antonio Garcia de Leon, who wrote a story of, on Chiapas and his partner as well. We also had at this Congress Paco Ortiz Pinteki, a journalist who back then was working at Revista de Revistas and then started working for Proceso Journal and photographer Rogelio Coyer, who was uh, with us, you can see here on this next slide, that to celebrate the Indigenous Congress, there was a condition for it to be a, an Indigenous Congress for Indigenous people. And what does this mean? We had already heard many red, uh, many discourses, a lot of rhetoric of uh, the meeting of soci sociologists, 
politicians, uh, people talking about indigenous peoples, that is talking about them, but not hearing their voices. So what we wanted to was to have an event where indigenous peoples could uh, make their voices heard, their experiences, their living conditions, and also to have the majority of the people attending the Congress being indigenous people. Also, the Congress should be financed by independent funds, not by the federal or national government. So we started raising funds. We were aware that there was someone that was at the Inter-American Foundation that was very much connected and with the indigenous movements and these people helped us to get the funds from this institution. However, there was a great contribution from local groups. These people uh, contributed with food, with facilities, with their time, with people, with transportation. So the whole sum of these elements allowed us to have the Congress. Next slide, please. So preparation. Since the delegation of the Congress, uh, the Congress was uh, placed on Don Samuel. He was the one who was to organize the Congress. He wanted to have the involvement of different area teams. And this was not easy because people thought in a very religious way that the Congress was was to uh, recover traditions and not for indigenous peoples to raise their voices under the way they were living in reality. So raising the funds and other types of support took time and especially what took time was to tell this idea to community leaders this involved a whole process of going out to these areas to call in meetings to show them what they were preparing to do and telling them that the way forward was not that clear but they had a certain purpose and they came back the, the leaders consulted their own communities and then they gave their agreement so little by little with their participation their voices the theme of the congress started building up also we realized that we needed to prepare indigenous leadership at the congress we fought for we fought to have all ethnicities represented so that they were all present at the organizational team so at that time there were not many indigenous people who were able to write so the the organizational team clearly agreed on the fact that the indigenous people was were the ones that made the decisions so we needed to have community meetings so 1500 meetings take time from there we convened regional meetings in each sub-region then we had a sub congress different congress in each region and in each area and finally we had the event itself the congress in october 1974 but all of this was the result of an accumulation of uh, conversations to see what were the stances the stances of the people who were to attend the Congress. So the context, 
what was Chiapas like in 1972 or 1972 to 1977? As one of our poets says, Cepeda, Chiapas is not that big, but is it's very diverse. It's very uh, has many ups and downs. So geography was very very hard to overcome. We had a single road from Guatemala to the north of the country to Ciudad Juarez. This was the only paved road that we had back then. The rest of the infrastructure was lacking, was missing. We had no infrastructure. So if you ask many people what they um, what they think of the what are the country's services? Well, they say soldiers. They don't know any other thing as a service. There were there were no hospitals. There were no schools, and it was all concentrated in the capital. The indigenous communities were, were isolated. Each of them was far away from the other, and there were no ethnic exchanges. Tetzales were on their own, conquering the jungle. The Tzotziles were in the highest parts of the countries. The Choles were in Tumbala, in Palenque, and the Tojolavales were in Margaritas. But there was no exchange among them. We had uh, different control institutions, for instance, the Indigenous Institute, which controlled this indigenous world together with other institutions, with the state government and the federal government. Then we had the Secretariat of Public Education, which imposed a calendar which was completely foreign to the rhythms of harvesting and the needs of the indigenous community. Then we had the Department of Agrarian Affairs and Colonization. It was a sort of grandparent of the Agrarian Secretariat. And we saw in, in Chiapas, especially at the border with Guatemala, as an area of colonization. It was national land, but Still, we needed to inhabit these populations with more than 25 families. So even the diocese were based on exodus, on going there to conquer these lands. There was no awareness, no ecological awareness as we have today, but this was the, the need at the time to go and conquer the land. I remember that Sebastián Hernández Mesa, who was very stubborn, uh, an indigenous person, he told me about his experience. He heard uh, a bell to have the community meeting, but people did not arrive. People were not there. And the next Sunday, he heard the bell and the people were not there. So he met with his comrades and he said, what, what is going on? Is it us or the people that is wrong here? And they say, no, people is not coming because they are hungry and they are looking for food. This is why they don't come. So they realized that their work was to get the land to give it to the community. They started this whole process of going out with their families from Matsam to go populate the Margaritas mountain. This other institution that controlled prices, uh, the prices of coffee, was the Institute of Coffee. So, thank you. They said that they had not money and they cannot buy or pay for coffee. But they say, well, my, my friend here has money. So people had to 
take the coffee and sell sell it at low prices to that uh, friend and then the person bought the coffee from their friend and they shared the profit and this is what Konasupo uh, did as well they invented uh, this pretext pretext they controlled the harvest of, of maize they always presented excuses such as uh, humidity all these other things to lower the prices we also saw some interesting characters at these municipalities, at these capital cities. For instance, San Cristobal, Ocosingo, Yajalón, and Margaritas. There were people who were always dressed all in black and were at the at the entrance of the of the roads. People knew them as harpies. They were known as uh, this because they went into buses and they stole money from, they, they stole the, the products from the people and they threw money at their faces. So people cannot do anything about this. They were taking the, all the beans, all the chickens, everything that they were carrying. We also have had coyotes who were the middlemen to in the sale of maize and coffee and we also saw a salesman who uh, people who sold drinks selling alcohol in in the communities also uh, people who moved fences at that time in chiapas fences moved because people the the leaders the the authorities moved fences to expand their own land. Each year, they advanced uh, a few meters to take land away from communities. And also, we had the enganchadores, people that went to work at the farms, especially at Soconosco, or to harvest canes. And they did not go to work to get money, but they went to stop being as another person that needed to be fed at home. And also we had the catechists who also uh, heard about the idea of the Congress. Some of them said, well, this is not for us. Others said, yes, we need to commit to this because this is what the community needs from us. Others said, well, no, our work is the word of God, is the holy book. So this created a small division, which was fortunately uh, very well solved. Therefore, we got to October. And we can see the first topic of the Congress, that was, which was the problem of the land. And their, the summary of it all is that they felt that all kinds of attacks were aimed at destroying the community possession of the land. And what they wanted was to privatize it. You know, they felt it from that back then. So they said, the land and the work are the ones that give us our misery because they felt that they were working and working 175 days for coffee for in the coffee plantations and then a, their craft comes and takes our work away so we are working on corn and we don't get anything just barely enough to feed our families what Katy and Javier told us as well of the so-called acasillados. They stay in the farms, the ones that are more, most the most poor, the ones that are in servitude, in alcohol, deep down, drained in alcohol. 
I heard a person working in a in a farm in Altamirano. He's currently uh, the uh, the municipality president of his sector, and he said, "You are." like my children you are in my land you are my children and you don't pay your children you give them food and water and he gave them a bottle of alcohol per week so that they could get drunk next slide please the other problem that we saw and discussed in all the congresses was trade or commerce. We sell cheap, we buy expensive. The buyers are deceiving us. The buyers who are gathering the coffee, the timber companies and the government institutions, they thought that everyone was deceiving them. They were always respectful of their word and they always found deceit. They always found the fact that the weight and the measures were tampered with in time they learned but originally they got robbed a lot the third topic that was discussed was education but they said we want education for liberation we can see that the school such as it is does not align with our needs our traditions and our culture so they were reflecting upon it. They were saying, why in order to become, to be a Mexican, shall I stop being a total, sotil, topolabal? Why should I miss, lose my identity in order to get a certificate? Therefore, their proposal was that they wanted schools where what was taught was their rights and obligations, mainly community rights and obligations, rather than the individual ones. They insisted on community rights and duties. The fourth topic that was addressed in the Congress was health. Health understood as life, as a synonym of life. They said, Doctors are focused, are concentrated in the cities, and they never go out to the field, to the rural areas, which is true. They just had a couple of health centers. And not in the communities. Therefore, they said that we needed to organize our community in order to improve life Ellos insistieron en que no querían que se perdiera y que se respetara sobre todo el trabajo de las parteras comunitarias y de los iloles, los médicos tradicionales. Si me da la siguiente. They asked for the respect of midwives. So the conclusion of the Congress was the organization. This word became a myth with different meanings, with different uh, semantics meanings from being organized and acting together, thinking together, deciding together to have create groups for our defense. This get, got all mixed up. The whole concept got mixed up until the moment of the rise of sapatism, which is known in the communities as organization. But in the Congress, the aim was not asking for things, but working from the grassroots, from the ground up to change the situation. But in a more organized way with uh, interrelationships between groups, with a sense of region, with proposals, not only with uh, denouncing. Next slide. 
So what did it contribute to the popular movement? Let me remind you that this was a process that started by late 1972 and ended in 1977. First, it managed to do away with ethnic isolation. You know that each group was isolated, tzetzales, totziles, and here they started working jointly mainly those that had conquered the forest that were choles, tzetzales, topolavales groups, and to a lower extent, tzotziles. Therefore, the Congress started a process of relations based on the visits among communities, friendship, among all, all of them, and hospitality. But all of this with the, a sense of things being free. There, were no, there was no business behind it. There was no trade. This was a very beautiful process that reminded of the diocese of San Cristobal, reinforcing the whole popular movement. The Congress led to a process of community analysis and alternative education. So all meetings started by analyzing what the situation was like, what was going on, what happened with the land, with the production, in a very simple way. So they said, let's see what's going on with our coffee. Let's follow up on what's happening to our corn and let's see what's happening to our children at school. And what can we do in this regard? After the Congress, an agrarian legal office was settled. Out of 21 cases, they managed to solve 18. Three cases were just, I mean, it was impossible to be for them to be solved. They couldn't deal with them. Then they created an indigenous newspaper, La Voz del Pueblo, The Voice of the People, that was published in five languages, the four native languages and Spanish. It was a tabloid, so it was, I mean, each page, each page was in a different language. I mean, one was in Tzotzil, one was in Chol, one was in Tzetzal, and the other one was in Totolabal, and the final one in Spanish so as to involve peasants who were sharing spaces with the indigenous communities. That newspaper reached the communities. It was read and it was analyzed, discussed in community meetings. And then they gave the information or upon their reflections, they created the new, the next edition, or if they had any situation that they wanted to be reflected in the newspaper. The translators were also the first journalists because they were the ones who conveyed the knowledge of one people to the other. It was a cornerstone in the diocese pastoral. After this, Don Samuel Ruiz, the bishop, made a declaration saying that those people who were in the diocese of San Cristobal and made no effort to help the poor could perfectly well go away. Therefore, confronting the church that is to say the church that was focused on the cultural part and on the religious part, without being autochthonous and the liberating part, let's say, that also found a greater commitment in the problems of the land, the problems of health, of education. Therefore, the Congress strengthened the feminine fight against alcoholism this fight against alcohol was led by women, mainly women that were nurses, that were part of the health workers. 
and also to revalue the work of midwives and of natural medicine. This inf this, all this information reached the communities and was kept in many other movements or groups that struggle for their autonomy, mainly financial and economic autonomy, and mainly for their safety and their food for their food safety and food security. And all this process that, for example, right now with COVID has stopped, has been halted to a certain extent, they've managed to keep it, to sustain it, because they think that democracy implies discussion and face-to-face -face discussion, not only representation. So can I just have the last? You just have one minute left for your speech. Yes, yes, I will be wrapping up. This is just a final uh, slide to thank you, which is in three languages there. Thank you very much. Kuncha Kalcitik, this was actually the poster of our Congress, and Xie Xie in Chinese with the little, little Chinese that I can pronounce. Thank you, Claudia, indeed.